Ooh, look at that. I remembered the microphone. Are you excited? Um, as I immediately walk off screen. Hello, friends. How are you today? Um, I'm turning on music because uh, I always forget. And like, you know, you guys want music, right? Why isn't it playing? No idea. There we go. It's a little on the loud side. Super exciting. That's okay. Welcome. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I'm Amber Nicole, for those who don't know. Welcome to my very, very exciting stream with cameras in shot and everything so that, you know, you always know what's going on. There we go. That's better, right? Now you don't see the camera. Nobody knows the difference. So I've been making things. If you can't tell, look at this. Look at all this over here. Um, I got some molds in and uh, they're the button molds. Now you also probably see off maybe in the corner here. I'm, I'm charging this up so you guys can see it, but that's my UV flashlight and you don't see. Oh, yeah, I tried. Um, but uh, yeah, so these are glow in the dark buttons. I made these buttons. I finally figured out how to get that little ridge going really nice and strong. Um, it's about, you know, tracing with the toothpick and the mold and, and that kind of stuff. And, and it is, it has an advantage when a button has a ridge like this, it protects the strings. Hello, Volfite, how are you? It's good to see you. Um, so I've been making buttons. Different belief systems. I, why are there vampires in Europe but not in Africa? My guess is different belief systems. Um, or blood types? I don't know. This is probably a joke that I don't follow. Um, <laughs> but uh, of course I immediately switched to different belief systems. Why? Why are there no or vampires? There probably are vampires in Africa. If there are, if there are vampires in Europe, there, there are probably vampires in Africa. I mean, maybe we should debate this. I don't know. I don't know enough about like different... God bless the rains in Africa. Oh, and it's the rains that keep the vampires from coming. Well, so, so we just, um, the rain stays mainly on the plains in Spain. Isn't that, yeah, I don't know. Holy water. Yes. Yes. Oh, I follow now. Okay. That's a lot funnier than I let it be. Um, yeah. Holy water. Okay. Yes. It's, it's true. There's holy rot water in Africa. I hear that's the best song to play when you want to push, um, really annoying millennials and Z's out of a bar. Um, I don't know how I know this, at least in Philly. Uh, great joke, Volfite. Great joke. <laughs> um, so I've been making buttons just for the heck of it. Um, something happened in this mix. Either I didn't do it right because buttons aren't supposed to bend. Um, or I put too much of the blue in so it couldn't harden completely. Or um, something happened to my mix. But so every I, I have these itty bitty really tiny molds that I've been throwing um, extras in. I don't know what I'm gonna do with all these. Maybe I'll just throw them into a lesson and call them rhinestones. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm also working on making a bottle plug. <coughs> Excuse me, a bottle plug here for my husband for a water bottle he really likes. Um, so it, it's like this. This is what he uses as a water bottle when it's functional, but this lid has been a real challenge and I filled it with resin just a bit speaking of water and I'm trying to make like a, a low profile topper for it that he can like use and I'm thinking it's going to be this which is this like nice glow in the dark gemstone that I also made um you know because who doesn't want a gemstone that glows in the dark on the top of their water bottle um anyways so I'm I'm working those things but the really exciting thing I have going on today here let me clear out the everything Clear it all out. I went on my walk this morning. 
and I saw some things. So it's been about two to three days after we had a pretty good rain. It's the best time to find the best mushrooms. And I found some mushrooms. I did, and now someone's calling me. I don't know, someone in Falls Church, Virginia. Is that any of you? Probably not. Um, just saying, like. <laughs> yeah. Cool. But I found some things. And I spent a little time identifying them. And I don't completely have them identified, which is really exciting. So one thing I did, I found some kind of a land... Um, snail shell which I have not found since I was a child so I had to pick it up judging by you know the wear and tear on it um it was near some water but um it's adorable look at this thing look at this shell um so this is some kind of snail uh and I just kind of love it and you know I want to collect anything and everything I can find um so I thought I'd, I'd bring it to show to you all especially after having discovered this who can identify this mushroom. This one's a hard one. I couldn't find it in my mushroom identification book. And there's a reason for that. I'll, I'll, I'll leave this on screen while you all think about it and what it could be. Um, here is this. It's a brown mushroom. Check out those gills that don't quite reach the stem. Um, that brown color. All of these smell very mushroomy because I know that smell is a can be a, a point of identification for a mushroom. Um, these all smell well, not the shell. The shell doesn't smell mushroomy. Um, so I'll cut down the stem for those of you that know what we're doing here, um, and know that this is an identification thing too. Look, it's a hollow stem. Anyone know what that means? Okay, and um, you that they were growing in singular kind of formations and then some in like little clumps like this uh, you know I didn't pick them all I did leave some um, and then there's this which is growing on a downed tree I think I know what this one is um, no visible gills on the bottom it's very young um, it's got a uh, kind of papery can you hear that can you hear that yeah, it's got like this papery sound here. Um, it's cold feeling, so we know there's water in it. Um, and then, uh, so here's more of these brown ones. Yeah, yeah, brown ones. And then there's this amazingness, which I think is the most fragrant of all the mushrooms I found. Um, and, you know, so they kind of have branching kind of things going on. But I, and I, I plucked them out of the ground, but they're kind of rather independent. Like, look at this. And they're beautiful. And I didn't, I didn't bring up all the mushrooms I found. This is just a, a collection of what I found. Um, and I was walking and exercising, not at all anticipating um, picking up mushrooms this morning. I kind of knew they'd be there, but I really didn't. Th I was going to someplace pretty popular where I haven't been able to find mushrooms in the past um, because it's there's a lot of people there. Um, so I'm looking at these and they, they, they break apart at the tips. Can you see that? Um, you know, they're kind of breaking, you know, they, they branch at the tips just a little bit. This is probably, but they, they were growing in groups and there were usually more than one group nearby. Um, it looks like a coral, right? So I guess it's like a, a toothed mushroom of some kind. Um, technically, it fits in the toothed mushroom category. Uh, a similar mushroom that you might find would be like, a, and and those are and they're choice edibles. Oh my gosh! Where are you? That there was a storm that bad, Vilar Dragon. I'm so sorry. What are you doing on Twitch? <laughs> I would be like up there on the roof covering it. Unless this is a bad joke, like Wolfite's joke above. Um, whoa, I didn't hear anything about storms that would pull roofs off. Oh, it's a, it's, it's another joke. 
It's another joke. Oh. Uh-huh. Note my amusement. I'm talking about mushrooms. Well, if you really had had a wonderful storm, you'd have mushrooms in three days. Their spores blow on the wind. But these are some beautiful mushrooms. If anyone has some identification tips, do add them to the chat. Um, I'm pretty sure, based on the hollow stem, the brown, somewhat funneled shape here, that these are um, a form of chanterelle. Perhaps edible. Don't know. Um, I don't eat mushrooms unless I'm 110% sure they're good. This is a crown, uh, some kind of crown tip fungus, uh, or uh, some kind of coral. It's not crown tip fungus. I did see that, but there weren't any big bunches of it, so I didn't grab it. Um, it's not a yellow tip. It's not a green tip. Um, it's, uh, it's some kind of wonderful stringy mushroom. And I'm pretty sure this is um, a Berkeley's polypore, also an edible. I picked it pretty young. I wasn't willing to let it continue growing for everyone else. Um, pretty sure, but I don't know. I don't know for sure, so I won't eat it because I don't know. This, I'm 100% sure I know what this is. Did anyone have any guesses on this mushroom? Notice no gills underneath. These really strange textures going on. Very dirty. It did grow out of the ground. Such a weird texture on the inside. Kind of resembles cauliflower. It's not a cauliflower mushroom. I can tell you they look very different and far less like cauliflower than this. Um, any, any guesses from the um, comedy troupe that's joined today? I know these people. That's all I'm saying. No? Any guesses? This is probably an aborted honey mushroom. And it happens when it grows near another mushroom. And you can eat honey mushrooms. I've never eaten them because I'm not 100% on my identification on them. But this happens when two mushrooms grow near each other and then they abort their fruiting bodies. Um, and they call them shrimp mushrooms. Um, again, this was the only one there. I believe there were other honey mushrooms around. Um, but I found that really fascinating. Really fascinating. I love mushrooms. I just think they're so cool, as Volfite knows. Um, so it was just a really great mushroom day. There were other mushrooms out there. I think some rusulas and... Um, Plenty of bolettes, some of those garlicky ones. I can't remember their name. They're poisonous, but they, they smell and taste like garlic. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the mushrooms are amazing, is all I'm going to say. On my walk, I got delayed. It made me late back here for an appointment, for a notary thing. It was it was a thing. But uh, I also miscalculated my time. I'm no good in the mornings. I really am no good in the mornings. Um, but anyway, so right now in New England... Uh, because there was some rain a few days ago, is an excellent time to go for a walk. Which brings me to my middle schoolers, if they're watching now, because they've been sent to at-home learning. Uh, you have an assignment, it's extra credit, to do GPS art, and I would encourage you to do that. Um, and map your walk and cr create that creature and upload it. If you're watching, just saying. You can also look at mushrooms. Um, ooh, I'll give even more extra credit if you find the most unique mushroom. And can I s identify it scientifically? You heard it here. And it's recorded. You have it in recording. I'll give extra credit for finding the coolest mushroom. Um, anyways, these are great mushrooms. So, yeah, my middle schoolers have been uh, sent home for remote learning, um, which none of them wanted. I know. We were talking about it last week, how it was a possibility, but none of them wanted it. I miss you all already. I know. I don't even usually see you all till tomorrow. But, you know, go look for mushrooms. You'll enjoy it. So um, I'm going to clean these up because I think today I'm going to watercolor. Um, yeah, that's what I'm feeling today is watercolor. 
Um, I don't have as much time as usual because today is my first day back to um, teaching in the schools, um, the 21st century program here in Manchester, New Hampshire. I'm going to be at Gosler. So if any of you are remote learners at Gosler or, um, you know, look, watching this in class when you're not supposed to be, I'm coming to you very soon and we're going to do some fun things. Um, it should be fun. It should be fun. Promise. Um, well, there's a lot of work going on. The, the, the abandoned house over the corner here, not corner, caddy corner to me, got bought and it's being renovated and it's a good thing. Um, but it's a little noisy. You might hear it. What else exciting going on in my life? I can breathe. I sound a lot better than last week, don't I? Yeah, I can breathe through my nose. It's now settled in my lungs, but I get a COVID test very regularly. So if I ever am positive for COVID, uh, I'll know. I just had a test this morning, so I'll have those results in a few days. Um, what other things have I been doing? I got disappointed by a rose mold I bought. Um, I should have just made my own, but I was like, oh, this is cute, and this is pretty much what I wanted. Um, but it's got bubbles in it, like in the actual mold. I don't know if you can see this. That's a bubble. So the form is distorted, and it looks like there's a bubble when you actually uh, make the form. Let's see, where is that bubble? So it's... Yeah, it's, it's right there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but, and, and then some, yeah, it just has bubbles everywhere and it makes me very disappointed. So, um, I'm not thrilled with this mold. Don't buy this mold on Amazon when you see it. They did send a bonus mold. It's this little cartoonish flower, whatever. I wanted something a little more realistic looking and, um, it glows nicely, you know, because I did some fun color stuff. It's a, it's a hot pink orange on the outside and a glow blue on the inside. And this, that was the second one I did. The first one was a green glow on the inside with the hot pink on the outside. But, um, yeah, so just some experiments with resin. I may just, you know, I may turn these into earrings. I may, um, I may just make them rhinestones that my students can use. Like, imagine the joy they'll experience when they realize the rhinestones they chose for their artwork glow in the dark, like that. Like, you know, that's like what everyone in their lives wants, right? Yeah, you want glow in the dark rhinestones. Um, so I'm gonna clean up a little bit and I'm gonna pull out my watercolors because I got them back. Um, and actually, I'm not even gonna be watercoloring today. <laughs> I, I say I'm gonna bring up my watercolors. It's my giant watercolor painting that I've been working on a while. What I'm gonna be doing is pen and ink on top of the watercolor, bring out the details. Um, and this is this giant painting I've been working on quite some time. It's just a representation of how I imagine my yard to be. It's not exactly how my yard is because I've drawn some mushrooms and my yard just doesn't have mushrooms, which makes me sad. So sometimes I just go collect mushrooms, grind them up a bunch and release them into my yard in the hopes that they spore in my yard so I can have some cool mushrooms. But I don't have cool mushrooms in my yard. Um, I will probably one day when my uh, maple tree dies because hardwood trees attract cool mushrooms, but I don't right now. Um, you're going to notice some new music on my channel because I've licensed more music music, music for my um, Instagram channel like this one. This was just on this little spooky kind of beach party noise. Um, was just on one of my Instagram videos of one of my students who created a zombie planet and she made a zombie Statue of Liberty. It's a brain and she put a zombie cane on the planet, which is a hurricane, but for zombies and pointed out on the shore where there was a zombie beach party because zombies like the water in her world. Um, and I love the creativity that that student showed with that planet. Who doesn't want a zombie planet? Yeah, something happened. I think my ratios were off. This was the same mix as this bendy blue um, that I just put coloring into. I don't think it's ever gonna set. So <laughs> what a, bu a button, right? A flexible button. You want a flexible button? I don't. Um, I don't know, just playing around with resin, trying to do fun things. Maybe one day I'll like actually make things with it. Who knows? So I'm gonna clean all these up, put them all into like a cup of some kind. I need a cup like that, that holds my mushrooms. 
It's a good song. It's a good song. It was great for the uh, Instagram video because I only get 15 seconds on Instagram to do stuff, some fun stuff. Ooh, I found the cup I need. And with this song, I chased a butterfly. I chased it out of my yard. So I wanted it to stay around, but it, it didn't want to. No accounting for taste. It was a monarch, you know, with all the work that I'm trying to like do with returning native species to the yard so that, you know, the world doesn't fall apart. It would have been nice if the, if the monarch had stuck around, but no, but no. They're currently traveling down to Mexico for their, you know, enormous migration. So you may see them around. Be nice to them, give them nectar where you can in, in the form of native flowers. Um, well, you can try sugar water, but really the nectar, the native nectar of like plants is what you want. All right, let's scoot this down so I can overhang and clean up all this resin I've made. It's kind of excessive, I know. I get these like little breaks and I'm just like, ooh, you know what I'm gonna do? That. Resin. I've also been making masks. I got about 20 done last week. I've got, I don't know, 40 or 50 like in progress right now. Ooh, Wolfite, I have masks for you. I have a package I'm putting together to send you. FYI. I dropped some resin. Little itty bitty resin pieces. Ooh, one of them's a marquee shape. We can't drop that. I like marquee shapes. Oh, that nice little marquee shape. So much stuff. It's part of the life of an artist. I'm trying to downsize some of my stuff so that there's more working room in here, but it, it doesn't go easy. It just doesn't. The rate I'm going, I'm not gonna get my painting out. It's great, it's great. I should have cleaned this all up before, but with my walk, and then there was a notary thing, and then I, you know, of course I had to clean up to go live on Twitch. I don't know. I make my life harder than it needs to be. But it is getting exciting around schools just to be back in them, see faces. I mean, half of them. Uh, from behind their masks, um, I got to work in Hillside the other day, which was a lot of fun. We made zombie masks and learned about the bones in our heads. So a skull it was quite nice, quite nice. But, uh, yeah, you know, just keep making, just keep making. But, I don't know, what else? What is, what's going on in your guys' lives? Like, surely my life isn't the only thing that's exciting, though it could be, I, you know, no judgment. Maybe you just sit at home and do home stuff. Home buddies, they're important too. Home buddies, home buddies are important. If there weren't home buddies, no one would be watching me right now, right? It was fun. I had some cool new uh, chatters last week. I really enjoyed having them. They were from India and Germany. I spoke German on my channel. Um, <laughs> I did. I wanted to know um, if any of my German viewers are watching right now. So um, it would be really great. I have a German question. I need to know if there's a word that means like a certain thing. Um, basically like, yeah, I'm looking for a word because I know German can be very specific in terms of the words, um, that they like have, um, I know I'm being really descriptive. Um, but that, the, is there a word for like feeling really, really sad and disappointed and like you didn't want something to happen, um, but really justified that it did because you knew it would, um, yeah, I've been having that feeling lately for a few things. Um, I won't get into specifics there, but that's the feeling I, I have a lot of the time right now. So, um, yeah. No, any German speakers who want to pipe in with that word? That'd be awesome. The shell needs to have a home. It's going to live above my monitor because I kind of love it. Um, I may need to wait. Ooh, I'll, maybe I'll cast that shell in resin. <gasps> Right? I'll do like uh, an alginate mold. 
Yeah, an alginate mold. Oh, there's tons of shells that have been cast and stuff, like even for like soaps. I don't know, it's kind of trite, isn't it? Been done, whatever. Um, yeah, things. All right, let's pull out the big painting. painting yes it's watercolor and it's just some kind of graphical representation of what my yard looks like and it's not really what my yard looks like but kind of you know I've got my fig tree because I've got three fig trees I love figs I've got a squirrel skull this is my threat to the squirrels who like to dig in my garden and eat things um, the robins that I like to watch, they're like little dinosaurs that hang out <laughs> in my yard and hunt for like worms and stuff. And they're really fun to watch because they really move like raptors in Jurassic Park or whatever. A worm to be food, a crow, because I would really like if crows spent more time in my yard. They don't, but it would be cool if they did. Uh, sunflowers, I definitely have lots of sunflowers, some grass. Clover, which I'm planting to replace the grass. I, I painted some shiitake mushrooms just because I hope that I get shiitake mushrooms one day. And then um, Morning Glories, because I've got a bunch of those. Um, Lily of the Valleys over there. They're poisonous, um, really great ground cover that grows in my yard. I love them. Um, just bugs, dirt, texture, a skull. There isn't a body in my yard, but let's pretend, because I like skulls. A lovely uh, maple tree here. And then there's a squirrel over there, um, just kind of hanging out, because this is pretty much what's in my yard. I have a giant garden too, but whatever. Um, so I'm going to work on this. Did I make enough room? It's a big painting. Oh, I'm going to knock my flashlight over. You know, emergency equipment needs to be accessible. So keep your flashlights available. There we go. There we go. That's not bad. Um, unfortunately, the part I want to work on is... Well, we'll work here. We'll work here because that's, that's what you can see. I'm going to lower this camera a bit because it will be way better to be a little more on level with my hand. Yeah. How's that? You like that? And let's focus it. Wrong way. It's not an easy camera to focus. There we are. We'll work on the lilies of the valley. Yeah, I have my pens that I was planning on using. Um, you know, students who are watching me especially, pay attention to the fact that I am using microns and not Sharpies on my artwork because uh, Sharpies are, they're acidic and they eat through paper. So if you want to work on something that you want to last, don't use Sharpies, use microns. Um, yeah, I was over there working on the clover and that's what I'm really inclined to go work on. You know what, maybe I'll work on it upside down. You can draw upside down, doesn't matter. Light and form still respond the same way. You just gotta reorient in your brain where you're putting that. So the end goal for this piece is to be the curtains in my dining room, um, which is probably hilarious to some people. But it's going to be a large painting that I'll then blow a uh, scan in, blow up to six times its size, and print on some lovely fabric. Um, here we go. Can you see it okay? Oh, I knocked off a, a clip. A nice little. There we are. How's this? Can you see what I'm thinking of working on here? I think you can. Yeah. This works, right? No feedback from, you know, the comedy troupe that joined, but they were commenting earlier. Um, so yeah, it's just a constant, you know, working of what's going on here. Now, here's a mistake. So, you know, it, it's, it's important to be honest. Everyone makes mistakes. This is a mistake. I drew a bee here and forgot I drew a bee and I got carried away when I was doing the leaves here with the watercolor and so this should be a clear wing. What I'm ultimately going to do is redraw the bee on a separate piece of paper and then cut it out with a very, very tiny and very, very sharp blade. 
um, and to paste it on top. In the meantime, I can get to work defining some more of the clover. Look at this. Isn't this lovely? So I'm currently working with a 0.01 micron pen. Very small. It's not the smallest they make, but it's about the second smallest, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm just defining these shapes a little more clearly with an outline. And I'm going to continue on and pretend like that B isn't there. And then, so notice, of course, I'm right-handed, so this camera's in the wrong spot. Maybe I will just move the camera. Is that what you guys want to see? A moved camera? Let's make everyone sick for a moment. There we go. I moved the camera. Are you proud of me? Now we'll draw right side up. And that flashlight's in the way again. We're going to switch this back around and put it down. Because you guys want to see the details, not the back of my hand, I presume. There we are. Right? All right, we're going to alter the view. We're going to take it in a little bit. Oh, that is that is taken in all the way. Okay, never mind. Um, I can bring it physically bring it down a bit. How's that? Good enough? So, yeah, I think that works. So, when you're working with a pen like this, um, of course, I need to stand and not lean over so much. When you're working with a pen like this, you want to darken the V's and that will make this leaf kind of pass behind the other leaf and wherever you make the V darken to it kind of casts this little itty bitty shadow it's a very cartoony style of working I don't even know if you guys can see it it's so tiny um, but it's a cartoony way of working but it really helps to find space when you're illustrating so I know that the stem goes behind so I'm darkening that V is making sense? Can you see? No answers. Got it. Um, and you keep doing that. So like anywhere I have a shape, I'm going to darken the V because I know it's going to go behind there. And it just kind of, it just make that line a little thicker wherever anything crosses, right? And if this is the object, the, the object over here is in front. And so this seam goes kind of behind whatever is here this seam is going to get wider and darker as it approaches the crisscrossing line. It's really rather kind of fascinating, actually, um, because that's, that's how you just define darkness and shape. This is not close enough for y'all, is it? Let's try. Why not? I can shift things. There we go, that's a lot, a lot lower. And this is a lot lower. They tell you not to do this live and I, I understand why. But I'm doing it anyways. This is a terrible filmographer of me. Probably really is. How's that? You guys can see better what I'm doing? Maybe a little bit. You get at least two views. Try them. Maybe if I switch it up. This one? Does this help? So, again, I'm going to bring it back to this flower right here. And this flower. Yeah, that's a lot better. So it's a clover, red clover. I do have a little bit of red clover, though I planted white clover in my yard in like an attempt to displace the grass. The clover is better than grass for a couple reasons. It, um, it doesn't grow as tall as grass, so you don't have to mow as frequently. And um, 
It also produces flowers, which grass does not, which feeds the bees. And feeding the bees is super important because we are killing the bees with all our pesticide use. So save the bees, stop using pesticides, tell your apartment complexes to stop using pesticides, and let's try to save the bees, yeah? Um, but um, yeah, we're killing all the bees. And if the bees go, our entire food supply will go. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, so I plant clover in the hopes that I'm helping to feed the bees, and not just honeybees. Honeybees are cool and all, like they're the ones that get the awesome rep and stuff. But really, like, it's, it's about the native bees, which honeybees are not native to North America. So the bees that we really want to see be productive in North America are the like big bumblebees and the black bees that live in wood. Those are native around here, and those were the pollinators for this region before we brought honeybees for our mead, beer, and all that kind of stuff. Um, boy, the construction noises are really intense. So here I am going back in to darken these bees and give this flower just a little more depth. Just by darkening these bees, it's a very cartoony style, but for illustration, right, I'm not going for super realism here. I'm not going for scientific identification. I'm going for just a style, something I kind of really want to see in my dining room in like my own little style and my own little flavor of life darkening these V's really begins to give this depth um, and when you when you use like a pen and ink type pen like a calligraphy pen or even my favorite pen of all time we've talked about the the Fuego travel brush pen um, I can get that kind of depth without going back and forth. So let's see if I can give you a demonstration of that. I wasn't planning on that. <laughs> I just totally like set a challenge there for myself. Let's move to the sunflowers, um, which is a little bit of a harder spot to get this camera to because um, they are in the middle of the painting. There in the, it's like the sunflowers might be the most important thing to me. I don't know. That's not true. But I do really like sunflowers. They're not my favorite flower, though, so don't go thinking that. Um, and let's adjust this so that you can see the sunflowers and my entire messy studio. Um, you know what I'm going to do? Why didn't I think of this before? Close the pen so I don't make a mess. And um, I'm going to put a piece of paper down on, oh, fabric, even better. Nice little piece of fabric. Yeah, that's why the camera can't be like this. <laughs> the camera just fell. <laughs> Did you catch that? I caught it. I literally caught it. Ha ha. How's that for a joke? Um, it keeps falling. Okay. This is really, really top heavy here. And heavy to the side, which we don't want. So I'm going to bring this out here with this piece of fabric underneath it. Bring it to the sunflowers here. Yeah, that's some sunflowers. And uh, weight it so that it will, oh, my stapler's pretty heavy. My stapler's heavy. This is, this is the stapler you want, the red swing line. I have two. That way no one fights over it. Uh, and that will weight it quite nicely. And let's get on that sunflower. Here we are. So, let's work these sunflowers with the Fuego Travel Brush Pen. I'm going to test the pen on a scrap piece of paper, really a pattern piece for uh, masks, just to make sure I am putting out ink in a smooth way. I wouldn't quite call this smooth, but I can work with it. And you can see how small the lines are that I can get and how thick the lines are that I can get. Can you see that? Kind of awesome. So this is where the talent and the practice comes in. My students who have seen into my sketchbook know that I have lines like this all over my sketchbook. It's me testing pens and warming my hand up before I get into really detailed work because you don't want to shake when you're about to get into really detailed work. Um, 
All right, before I like totally absorb my brain into this, let's check the, the, cam the, the camera, the watch, the phone, the thing that we live in our pocket um, to get things going. Let's see, oh, client messaged me. Oh, they're picking up something. It's out and ready for you. It's out and ready for you. Someone who bought t-shirts and sweatshirts. They're like, hey, I wanna pick it up. Can I do that? I'm like, yeah. Oh, oh, one of the German Twitch channels I'm, I follow is live. Bummer. I would have listened to her. She reads in German. It's fun. Um, it's good practice. So, double checking before I... All right. Yeah, so I have until about 3.30, so I have about an hour. That's that's good timing. That's good timing. I can live with that. So I'm going to be working here. Yeah, you can see that. Maybe not super well. We're going to stick with it because I think it's going to work. Let's get that sunflower out from behind my logo. All right, can you guys see what you want to see? I'm going to take a drink of water. Hydrate. In honor of Anna. Hydrate. Hydration brought to you by Anna today. Um, all right, let's do this. Tiny strokes are important. So when you're working on the atmospheric aspect of a drawing and adding lines to something, it may seem counterintuitive, but the things further off in the distance are going to have thinner lines and things closer to you are going to have thicker lines. It's going to give you greater clarity. It's going to add to the depth of the space, but really, you know, just because atmosphere air actually does kind of blur things off in the distance on a really clear day. Yeah, you can see for miles and miles and miles and miles. But we know that in most situations, there's pollution, fog, moisture and air that's altering how far we can see. So in those cases, you're going to have less definition further back in space, which means thinner lines. Okay, so these these sunflowers here are some of the furthest points in my drawing. Ready? Let's try. Maybe I can tilt this camera down so you can see me a little more. How's that? Just a little more down? I don't know if it really helps. I should have a camera down low. All right. These are the bristles. Bristles. Bristles on my pen. And these are the petals. All right, I'm thinking, I'm taking a look at where I put light and shadow and deciding what it is I'm doing and how lightly and I'm gonna press. Look at that, first petal. First petal! And each of the petals usually has some kind of, and I'm, I'm basically painting drawing with just the very, very tip of this marker. Can you see this? The very, very tip of this marker. So it's like one hair down when you get there. So, and sunflowers do have quite a bit of variation in their pairs. At least mine do because I have inbred them a little bit. So sometimes weird, funky things happen, but I always find that inviting when it does. And I'm gonna move around the sunflower so that it's not obvious that this is the first leaf petal that I put down. And actually petals are leaf, they're, they're a mutated pea, leaf that attracts pollinators like bees to the flower. And I'm going to pretend my sunflowers are like double ringed in petals. Because why not? Well just because right here it kind of looks like they are just based on the colors I chose. But in most cases sunflowers really have like one single kind of leaf. And something else I'm doing, you'll notice as I'm going around, right is that the petals are darker on the side away from the light so in my cases the light is coming from up here and coming down this way boy they had to choose now of all times to continue using that chainsaw anyways that's how I feel about that and continue on and keeping it really thin and light here. You know, like this. So I seem to have some light petals there, but the rest of the petals really do look like they're quite large. So 
again, darker, just barely so on the right hand side. We talked about this, we just talked about this. So heavier hand here. And that's where a brush pen like this is a huge advantage to that little micron I was using earlier. See, I'll give you a demonstration. Right? Oh, I just broke it. Oh no, here we go. My pen just broke. Look at that. I'm going to have to slide that back in off camera because I don't know quite what went wrong. So with this micron pen, right, I only get one width of pen and that is often all I need, but then it takes more time because you have to go back in and darken those V's or darken the side that is, you know, opposite the sun. And it just takes that just a smidge longer, just a smidge longer. But when you're working on a painting this big, right, like you need all the time you can get. Repetitive motions and those kinds of things. You just want to save yourself. So I would ordinarily most likely sit while I worked, but because I'm streaming, I'm standing. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about ergonomics of your working. So right now I'm doing really fine detail work. So it's mostly coming out of my fingertips and hand. Um, unless you are doing similarly fine and detailed work, you really should, um, be drawing from your elbow or and or from your shoulder, um, especially the students who are watching me today. Um, it will save you trial and tribulations down the line. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. Um, I really do. So see, I'm a lot of the places, I'm going back in a little bit here and darkening some of these V's, but in most cases, I applied my hand in a way that they were already darkened. And and that's, that's where, you know, talent comes in. Talent doesn't come in and just being able to draw well, okay? Until you can just automatically draw well, which comes from practice, you just take the time to continue adding the details back into your drawing by going back and forth into it. That's all it is, I promise. As I move around this flower. And again, this is an illustration. This is not an accurate representation of what a sunflower is or looks like. Okay, don't go thinking that. It's, it's an approximation. It's what a sunflower kind of looks like in my head. I'm trying to like elicit the feeling of a sunflower far more than what a sunflower actually looks like. Those petals are way too big to be a sunflower. At least my sunflowers have tiny petals and giant great big heads. And that's just what they are. And that's, that's okay. It is far more important that people look at this and go, oh, that's a sunflower, than I get it scientifically accurate. It is turning out adorable. I kind of love it. You love it? I love it. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm so excited. Are we all getting ready to ride our horses now? We got the chainsaw is, can you tell? Should I worry that someone is using a chainsaw so close to October near my house at an abandoned house of all those things? The guys can be kind of creepy, to be honest. I was trying to interact with them the other day because uh, my friend lives next door to it and she had a garden and she was using the abandoned house yard for her garden just because no one was using it. And it was adorable and I helped her and I gave her plants and all kinds of things to help her out. But she needed to move it that day, like without any notice. And so I was helping with it and they were just like, mansplaining idiots yeah they were mansplaining idiots like i walk over with a shovel and they're like here this is how you do it i'm like no i know how to move a plant have you seen my front yard i know how to move a plant i'm here to help her and so i left her my favorite shovel and then within no time they were using it and we had to go get it back and they're coked out is what it is it's sad um but her poor garden is getting like torn apart 
And it's so sad. It's so, 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 so sad. And they use a lot of power tools and it's noisy. I miss, I miss how quiet it was, but it's going to do away with the screaming cats in the middle of the night, I suspect. So whatever, right? Poor guys, they got a tough job. It is a tough job, but my poor neighbor and all her plants needed rehomed. So I helped with that, but the mansplaining was a bit much. Anyways, so back to these petals. Oh, I wish I could tell them to stop with the chainsaw. It's, it's, it's quite the thing, isn't it? Is it loud? Can you guys hear it or do you not hear it like at all? And I'm just like making up things to complain about. Sunflower is adorable. Come on, don't you just want to be friends with the sunflower? It kind of looks like it's just blowing in the wind just a moment. Yeah? Doesn't it seem that way? That's funny. It, that alert was just an alert letting me know I had gone live. <laughs> a little late. I've been here an hour. Anyways. Ooh, that got a little dark. That's all right. I make mistakes all the time. The artwork in my head is not what I draw. So I try to draw it, but it very rarely comes out that way, in all honesty. Like, everyone's always, like, it doesn't look like I pictured it in my head, and I get it. I get it, because mine rarely does. But, like, don't let that discourage you from making beautiful art because nobody knows what's in your head <laughs> like no one at all so just spend some time and put whatever's in your head on paper and other people will love it because they're just going to resonate with the experience that you put down it's not about putting down something on paper that looks perfect or exactly like what's in your head that's not what it's about i mean you can try to do that it doesn't work for me. And I like went to art school and stuff. So like, don't judge yourself to that standard, please. There we go, just a little bit in the back and then we darken those V's, right? If I didn't do it naturally with my stroke. We gotta darken those V's to send them back. And it's a sunflower. Does that look like a sunflower to you? It does to me. And now, I'm gonna move on to the stem while I think about the center part. Because the center part has this really great texture, right? With the, the seeds and, and it's kind of like a crisscrossy pattern that's going on. And I'm thinking maybe I should go back in with pencil and um, kind of add that or if I should just go in with the micron and dot that and just kind of suggest at the math that may exist. Thoughts? No? Okay. Let's work on the stem while I consider those options. Right? We're going to be darker on this side because this is the shaded side. But I do want to see everyone create like because you can create don't go telling that in your head that you can't create because it's not true it's not true at all look at this leaf oh, i just love a good sunflower leaf oh that got a little dark that's okay that's gonna pump forward a bunch i may fix that in post but this is the original finer <laughs> work of art it will be there and I'm okay with that ish I'm telling myself I'm okay with it as I squirm my artist friends get that I think right artist friends speak up please 
Tell me you feel the same way. I really don't know. I make all this stuff up. Not really. I mean, I have conversations with my artist friends and we like talk about our experiences as artists. And, um, you know, we, it's fun to see how similar some of our thought processes are and where we're similar, but yet very different in terms of style and content and what our creative goals are. Um, so, you know, there's that. All right, let's go in and dot this thing. All right. I'm going to pointillism this. Ugh, I wish this camera, you want me to adjust this camera? I bet I can. So you can see more of me, like leaned over. There we are, right? That's what you want while I'm working down here. See, right? Yeah, sure, sure. While well, I'm down here. See, now you can see me. This is what you wanted all along, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, um, dot, dot. And this takes forever. Now I do have basically a tattooing gun type device um, that will hold ballpoint ink, but it won't hold micron ink. So I want micron ink on this bad boy because this is an enormous painting and it has literally taken me years. So um, I'm going to, you know, spend my time and make this exactly what I want it to be even though the original won't hang in my living room or dining room it's gonna be the reproduction that hangs on the walls I don't know maybe I'll sell the original you want to buy the original so I can make money off of this because I don't need to keep the original I want the reproduction to go on my windows as my curtain because I didn't find like I wanted a garden scene to be my curtain and like All the garden scenes I could find were like old lady, which is there's nothing wrong with the old lady aesthetic. Like some people dig it, but that's not my jam. I want something a little more modern looking. Yes, this is a good way to get carpal tunnel. If anyone wonders, this pointillism type method, great for, point, for, for carpal tunnel, which I already have the beginnings of because it runs genetically. Um, in my family, both my grandfather and father around the same time had to have carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, surgery. <coughs> <coughs> so yeah, as I work the texture into this sunflower head, don't you just kind of want to eat the sunflowers in the sunflower head? Like it's so artistically painted that surely there's going to be like artistic flavor to the thing, right? Surely. I really think it's a thing. All right, we're getting there. So there, now I have an even texture over the whole thing. All right, that's a good place to start. But what I, I'm also going to add some darkness to the shaded areas. So that's going to increase the dots in the part because the, the sunflower face, if you will, the, where the, the pollen and the nectar and actually this is where the actual flowers are. These are just uh, modified leaves and sepals. But if you ever look at the inside of a blooming sunflower, you'll see that each of the little itty bitty flower, the seeds is made by an itty bitty flower right at the center. And they're in this like really cool, like geometric pattern on the inside. And the, the, the whole face of the sunflower is not flat, but in fact, kind of curves out a bit um, and puffs out kind of like a button. Yeah, like a rounded button. That's a good way to put it. Since we're familiar with buttons on this channel. Stream, sorry. I'm not cool enough for everyone here, I know. I'm just trying to make art and, and trying to inspire everyone to make art. That's all I'm trying to do here. are so da 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 is this exciting do you like watching this this is the kind of thing that you want when you're like really stressed out right just to just watch someone dot 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 who's really stressed out right now i know there are lots of people who are really stressed out right now 
All right, I am happy with that. Let's see, can we um, give you a better view of that? That beautiful sunflower? Pretty happy. I'm gonna move my camera around a bit so you can get an idea of that sunflower without much angle. See that? Isn't she beautiful? She's a beaut. That's, that's a sunflower. And look, when you compare it to this one, it looks flat. This one looks flat now, doesn't it? Because because I haven't given it that treatment. Oh God, I love it so much, actually. I'm really happy with the way that came out now that I'm taking a step back. God, I love it. Okay, it's not what was in my head, but it's still beautiful and I really love it. It's, it's okay, it's not as good as Layla, the Corgi Puppy, but it's, it's almost there. It's almost there. All right, let me move on to the next sunflower. Are we ready to watch me do the next sunflower? Is what we want, the next sunflower or two. There we go. That's a good view right there. Put the staplers back on this thing so it stays balanced. And right, so I can work right here. Can you see that well enough? Does that feel inviting? Do you feel like you want to keep watching from that? I got another beat because I've got programs running today and I have to check. I know you guys are seeing like businessy me and stuff. Oh, my friend just picked up her t-shirt and sweatshirts. Yay! And she could be listening right now. Hi! Um, anyways, drink some water. Hydrate, because that's important. I really wish they'd be done with the construction. It's kind of ruining my mood. Okay, look, I'm really glad that they're working on the house. I've said that. I've said that, okay? But, like, it's ruining, like your experience right now i think unless you don't hear it if you don't hear it tell me because i hear it this music though is kind of lame isn't it it's better than nothing i suppose and uh yeah it's a it's only got two more minutes left so i guess i'm gonna leave it because it was a 13 minute song it seems a shame to take it off now all right let us <laughs> continue with the sunflowers um Shall we? Yeah, all right, I'm gonna start. So this one's harder, okay? So, and I, I can see, like, I kind of screwed up right here, like this little, that's, that's not what I wanted. That wouldn't be there in like real life. This one's gonna be hard because of the angle. All right, I'm gonna think about it and I'm just gonna go droop and droop, right? Sure, that's, that's what it would do. So that the stuff on the side here is going to be foreshortened, which is hard to draw. Foreshortening is hard. I've been working on some uh, single point perspective drawing with some of my middle schoolers and they are learning the challenge of it. I'm very proud of them. They, they keep, they get, they work on it and then they get it just a little bit wrong and then they pick it back up and keep working on it. I'm so proud of them. Um, but this foreshortening is kind of the, along the same lines. Um, but it's organic. So that presents additional challenge. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm selling this foreshortening here. We'll see. I'm not sure I'm selling it at all. Look at that. It's kind of looking like a woolly bear sunflower, which I don't have any of. So I'm just going to try and get those front lines done on each of the petals so that we're convinced because this I screwed up here so they aren't quite convincing. 
So if we can get the front lines drawn and then draw the back lines, like the back surfaces of the petals, maybe it'll be a little more convincing. Ooh, how many of you have seen The Goldfinch? It's a movie. I haven't seen it yet. Don't No spoilers. But I've started reading the book, and I'm really enjoying the book. I had no idea it was so much about art, um, which I guess I maybe should have gotten from the preview because there there is a painting of a goldfinch. But I didn't I didn't quite get what it was about. Um, the book is wonderfully long. I love long books. It's like 30 hours or something, which is oh, just the best. There we go. That's doing a lot better than my first attempts here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I feel better. Um, I wasn't thrilled with how this was coming out. All right, now I'm convincing myself that those are coming up behind each other. Cool. Whew, I got a little worried there. I don't know if any of you noticed. Started talking about books I'm reading instead of the artwork. Okay, I made it. Hey, 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 that's, that's pretty good. All right, okay. I can do this. Look, art's hard. I'm not going to tell you it's easy. I never say anything's easy. I promise that. And my foreshortening doesn't quite work, but we'll deal. And sometimes you don't even have to draw the line to have the line implied, which is also another fun thing to do in art, I think. But, to each their own. You do your art the way you want. Just watch other people just to learn stuff, you know? Like, maybe the darkening V trick I just was talking about or whatever. And turn it into your own thing. I believe in you. I'm pretty sure you can do it. I don't think everyone's an artist. You just gotta decide what kind. Or discover what kind. And if you discover you're the kind of artist and you don't like that kind, just change it. It really, really isn't that hard. Okay, so this is not the, the best ever sunflower I've ever drawn, especially compared to the other one. I think I might have gotten like a little lax because I like was impressed with how I did with the other one. That's okay. It's gonna be part of like these three sunflowers, so who's going to notice the sunflower smack dab in the middle of my art? Note my dripping sarcasm. That's okay. That's why we pay for art and don't take a photograph. Mistakes are sometimes what makes the art worth looking at. Really. And the leaves on a sunflower are actually kind of variegated. Oh, I love it. So you just had a horn part beep. So these people that are like doing this work are like not at all paying attention to the traffic on the, uh, the alley. It's kind of frustrating. As someone who has to use that alley to park their car. All right, there we go. Okay, it's a sunflower. Let's add the dots that make that center pollinating area a lot more convincing. Now again, since this is tilted sideways, right, this kind of, it's, it's, oh, there's a specific name for this shape. It's rounded, but it's also kind of like a red blood cell, um, where it has this almost like donut, but without the full torus shape to it. It's indented in the middle. Um, that's definitely what sunflowers have. I know, because I've got hundreds of them in my yard. Yeah, this is turning out. I like this. Look, it's not the worst flower I've ever drawn. It may not be the best flower I've ever drawn either, but it's a flower and I'm happy with it. I may not have convinced you of my happiness with it, but I find it acceptable. And sometimes that's all you need to do in life. You know, we push ourselves to be so perfect all the time. And it's not exactly always healthy.
you don't have to get, you know, the perfect grade all the time. I mean, it sure does seem to open doors for you, and it instills, you know, good behaviors that will maybe lead to you being more successful in the future. But getting good grades for the sake of the good grades honestly doesn't get you that far. As someone who got all the good grades, trust me on this. It's, it's the discipline that you're learning from getting good grades and the prioritizing, the learning to prioritize what's important that is more important than the grade itself. I'm not saying you shouldn't do your schoolwork. Note, students of mine. Um, but I am saying it's not everything. Not a bad little sunflower. Look at her. She's, a, she's adorable. She's adorable. Um, nice. Nice, I'm quite happy with that. And, and it looks so much better now that I've given it all this depth with the line. Yeah, I was really worried for a little bit this watercolor just wasn't so, I, I dislike most of my artwork between the, the, <laughs> the 30 to 85% complete stage. So I love it before the 30% and then after, you know, the 85%. The but in between there, I usually don't like my work. So we're getting, we might be getting into the 85% stage if I'm kind of digging it again, which is normal. All right, let's move on to the next one. Right, this is gonna work. Tell me this is gonna work. Here we are, here we are. Use the staplers to stabilize. Here we are, where's, where's that sunflower? There it is. Okay, that's the one I'm going to work on. It's even more turned in profile. So we're going to be drawing the backs of the petals. Challenge accepted. Is this song still going on? Does it like show up twice? All right, I'm going to skip it. Here we go. This is, oh, this really worked. This is sunflower music, don't you think? I probably used it on my Instagram as like sunflower music. I'm pretty sure I did. So again, using the Fuego travel brush pen out of Japan, Pentel, um, I'm going to do the outlines on these. I'm scared of the sunflower after how cocky I got on the other one. I can do it. I can do it. Let's do it. See that positive turn in music? I'm using it. I'm using it. All right, so we are drawing the back sides now of these petals. And not exactly where they're connecting to the flower. They're kind of tucking in around and under, right? They're tucking, they're tucking in and around and under. So let's, let's emphasize that. Yep, I got carried away on the other one. That's okay. There are mistakes. Some collector someday, if I'm ever famous, will be like, there's a Twitch stream of this person, of, of, of this artist who I love painting this. And she said these were mistakes, but this is the part I love the most. And I'll be like, yep, that's why you pay me the big bucks. I don't know. I'll probably never be a gallery artist. That's not my personality. Look at these petals. They're so cute. Ooh, I like this one. I just used this one for, uh, for a great Instagram video. You should watch it. It's a dancing plant monster. It's kind of fantastic. It's the third highest thing on my Instagram. You want to watch it. It's adorable. They're morning glories. There's morning glories, see? Like these. It's true. I like the song too. I don't know what this kind of styly music is, but I love it. I'm an old lady. I know. Don't hold it against me. Oh, 
There we go. So theoretically, the petals will be turning back and facing away from me here. So I don't think they'll be particularly pointy. I'm really not sure as I make this up. What was I thinking when I painted this watercolor aspect? I don't know! I don't know! Don't hold it against me. I have been working on this for like literally years at this point. Oh, I'm wearing the pants that I edited. You know, I gave them the puffy bottom. Yeah, I got, I got my puffy bottom pants on. There we go. Not bad, not bad. leaves and the dark side is over here and it is impressive sometimes how big and strong some of these sunflowers get going to be a darkened V and it's going to be a little cast shadow from that leaf. Just saying. Now there's a helicopter overhead. Boy, you guys are just getting all the inner city goodness today. That's a good sunflower. I mean, is it my best one, sunflower? No, what is a good sunflower? Uh, the helicopter inspired them to get back to work. Maybe it was their boss checking them out. Cool. All right, now we're going to go into the dot, 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 right? Shall we dot, dot, dot? I think we shall. Dot, 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 dot to techno. Yes. Still not sure what they're using the chainsaw on. They've already cut down all the trees on the property, brought down the garage, and they cut off a set of back stairs too when they used a chainsaw for that. Probably with a hacksaw. I wasn't looking too closely. But that doesn't sound like a hacksaw. That sounds like a chainsaw. Here we go. It's an adorable sunflower. Shall we take a look at this from further away?
Let's. I just assumed a yes there. You're still watching, right? Look at those adorable sunflowers. Isn't that what you wanted? Sunflowers? You want to see some real artwork being made? It's a thing. See, I make real artwork. Did you doubt? No, I've just been in a sewing kick lately. Um, really quite strangely, actually. I don't know why. It's kind of weird. There we go. Um, yeah. Sunflowers. It's a good day. Um, any questions about what I made and drew today? No, it's not your usual, like, I'm making a bag that has to fit these requirements, or I'm making masks, or I'm making a headband, or this is, this is art, just like pure art. Um, illustration, even. But still delicious, I hope, for all your viewing pleasure. Um, I don't know. You guys got any like artsy fartsy questions for me? Now that you've seen the sunflowers I made, and you can see the artwork, you'll see more. I'm trying to like do a cool like smooth pan thing. Is it working? I don't think so. I tried. You can't say I didn't. There we go, that's closer. Yeah, it's in the wrong spot, but you know. Yeah. And cords are in the way. Okay, I'm not good at this. That's fine, I just haven't practiced. And the staplers are still holding this camera from falling over. Um, what else do you want to see? Like, um, so next week, it's probably going to be working on this a little more. Um, Unless I decide to sew something, but it's probably this. Because I'd like to get this done. It's a good painting. Hmm. I don't know, man. Um... Yeah. Cool. Sunflowers. It's a good day. Good day of drawing. I, I'm going to get ready to teach my class. Because i got a class to teach today. You're going to see me students, if you're watching this, when you should be in school. Just saying. And, um, you know, all my middle schoolers who are remote learning right now, I miss you. Uh, I hope you get to watch this and have some, you know, solace from seeing me in my real, whole face, too, because, like, when we're in person, you don't get to see, you know, you only see this, right? Um, so, you get to see my whole face. There are advantages to this distance learning, if you call it an advantage to be able to see my mouth and nose. What else? Um, I hope you all stay safe. I hope you all keep wearing your masks, doing the safe thing, get vaccinated if you're eligible, um, get your, your, uh, booster shot if you're eligible, all of that kind of stuff. Um, I got mine. I also got my flu shot. I love it. Um, yeah. I'm gonna get going. Peace, love, and happiness. <laughs>